Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson from motionworks.net back with a short substance painter tip for you. I've tried to get a radial anisotropic look in substance painter in the past, but it's always been a hack. And it's only this weekend that I've actually worked out how to do it. So I thought I'd just share that with you and save you some time if you've been wondering how to create this look. Now the anisotropic renderer was included in a fairly recent version of Substance Painter, but I'd never really actually used it up until now. You can see I've got this metal face here, and if I just move my environment around, we get a really nice anisotropic look. So how did I create this? Well, I have to say I cheated and used one of the templates that ships with Substance Painter. If I come up here and choose File, Open Sample, and choose Preview Sphere. You can see this has the radial and isotropic look already set up. So what I did was select the folder that it's inside, right click and choose Create Smart Material. I won't do that now because I've already done it. It's going to open up my recent file. So once you've saved your Smart Material, you can come back into your project. I've already applied the smart material here. I'm just going to turn that off. You can see I've just got this basic titanium pure. Now you have to make sure that you have the PBR metal rough and isotropy angle renderer chosen for that texture set. That's this one here. And it doesn't have to, of course, be applied to all the texture sets, just the one that's using the anisotropic materials. And in your texture set settings, you want to also make sure that you've added the anisotropy angle and anisotropy level just by clicking on channels plus, making sure you choose them from this list here. I'll just grab that smart material and just drop it in. Now we're not going to see anything at first because the mat is in the wrong position. I probably should have saved it without the mat, but it's actually quite handy. This mat here, I haven't done this before. Usually I paint on my mats or I use the um, polygon fill. This one is using a shape cone. So I can just grab it and just move it onto the object, which is really handy. I'll click on the mat just to see the mat. And I can just move that into position. and change the scale. Obviously, if your object's not circular, you might need to use a different shape. It doesn't really matter as long as it covers everything. I actually need to make it a little bit bigger because I need to cover these insets as well. And this is one thing about setting up your UVs, making sure that the like UV islands are next to each other. If I had these UV islands distributed on different texture sets, this would be an absolute pain. Okay, so now I need to move the fill layers across as well. Just get it about right. And you can see I've got this nasty seam. And I think this is a bug. There was a bug report on the Substance Painter forum. And I've added a, um, an addition to that just this weekend to ask if that has, or it's supposed to have been fixed because the response was that it was an, an alpha issue that was going to be fixed in the next version. And that was a previous version ago. Um, and that makes this, uh, so you can see when I zoom in, it disappears. It just depends on how far away the camera angle is. It has something to do with the, uh, the circular gradient. There's a start point. The circular gradient actually has a, a white point and a black point that are butted right up against each other. I just grab it from the shelf and just drop it in. You can see the icon slightly different in the um, the version that was saved from the template. But you can see there's the black and white uh, right next to each other. I think that's what's causing this seam. So hopefully 
a logarithmic or Adobe now will get back to me and um, give me some idea about how to fix that. It's really weird because if I zoom in, it goes away. But I have tried exporting the material and it does appear in the exported image. I haven't lined these up properly either. I'm going to move this. I did notice if I was playing around with the um, the offset of these fill layers, sometimes this disappeared. It's not the radial one, I think it's the gradient circular. But it didn't work all the time. You can see it's not disappearing now. so. That appears to be a bug. I didn't see it in the sample version. I couldn't make it appear. So I don't know why it's, it's happening in my particular project. If you're watching this Adobe, uh, maybe you can um, give us some idea about how to fix that. So that's the only downside of this. Otherwise it looks pretty good. You can go in and adjust the different fill layers. This top one is the actual uh, anisotropic scratches. And the bottom one, as we just saw, is the actual gradient itself. Just wondering where my parameters have gone. I might just replace this one. There you go. That's just the one in this latest version of Substance Paint. You can see my parameters have come back. And here I can change the angle, go for a sort of more swirly look. You know, the, the randomness of the angle. So there are some things that you can adjust. And the balance. So that's radial anisotropy. It looks pretty good if you can get it to work without the seam. Um, but hopefully that will be fixed in a future version of Substance Painter. For now, this is John from MotionWorks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.